In this video, we will change the previous learning activity to use a form rather than a hard-coded value. So here we are back at the file directory. What I'm going to do is copy this file that we previously created called orders.php. I will copy it to the same directory. I will then go ahead and rename it to ordersform.php. I'll now edit this page. So what we're going to do is change this to include a form entry rather than a static entry. As you can see here, we have contemporary casuals. So what I'm going to do is first go down to the HTML, and we are going to include a form right before our header 3. So inside this form, I'm going to add two inputs. So this first input is going to be of type text, where the user can actually enter in the name of the customer. So I will add a placeholder where it says name of customer. And we'll give you this a name. So the name will be customer. Then the second input is going to be of type submit, as in submit button. I too need to give this a name, so I'll give it a name of submit. And so there's my form with the text input and the submit button. Then I'll add a header 3 above this, and I will say enter a customer to see their orders. This form must have a method of post, so we'll add that. And then I'm going to get rid of this h3 because we don't want to display this, but I'm going to still echo the content. So I'm going to add this h3 I just got rid of right to my content variable up here. This way we will be able to use this when the results are actually generated. Notice how the header 3 still shows up here on the right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check if this form is submitted. Since I don't want to establish a connection with the database until the form has been submitted, I'm going to put the if before this. So I'm going to say if is set dollar sign underscore post close my parentheses and the is set should be in parentheses too so I'll put a parentheses before that then I'm going to open a curly bracket. Now everything that I'm going to run after the user clicks the submit button should be in that curly bracket. So I'm just going to highlight all this, hit tab, should automatically indent everything, and then I'm going to put a curly bracket after all of this. We still have an error message, so what I need to do is actually put what I'm going to check for in this post. So what I'm checking to see if it is posted is the submit button. Great, so now all we see is the form here on the right. So what I'm going to do now is check to see if the customer that they entered equals contemporary casuals or whatever customer that they enter. So we'll create a variable called customer and inside of this customer variable I'm going to store the posted value of the customer from the form. So I'll change this from submit to customer. Now just to re-emphasize this customer right here must match the name down here. So the posted name customer, so whatever they enter into this text box, is what's going to be stored here. I will then use this customer later on. So previously the user hard-coded contemporary casuals. We don't want to hard-code this, so we'll just get rid of this and the quotes and replace it with a single question mark. So what I'm going to do is replace this question mark with a value that is submitted. So this will be this customer variable. So I'm going to put this customer variable inside of square brackets. So I'll place that right there. All the rest of this should work just as we previously had it working. Uh, this content should only show up if they click the submit. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here, type in contemporary casuals, and click submit. And we should see all the values that are associated with contemporary casuals.